Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, I just want to go over what's going on as far as the weekend and as far as some negative news, some neutral news, and uh, I think some positive news, just kind of give everybody a little bit of insight about what is going on thus far as it pertains to what we're looking at here as a uh, increase in shorts, also uh, the impending uh, what would be called a death cross which is where the 50-day uh, moving average crosses below the 200-day moving average, and everybody's all excited about that, uh, not in a good way. And then we'll just take a look at how these indicators are not always uh, accurate. And finally, we're going to finish up with a little uh, Ted Cruz, senator from the United States, uh, on Fox News talking about uh, crypto and uh, what this all means and where I think things are going. So we'll go over all those things, uh, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. And, be and before... Uh, anybody gives me a thumbs down just because I'm talking about Ted Cruz. If you're gonna give me a thumbs down uh, for this video, give it because the video is just awful and you learned absolutely nothing. Don't give it because you don't like Ted Cruz. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, let's just talk about crypto. We're not here to talk about politics. We're just here to talk about the things that are going on in the cryptocurrency world. So, uh, like I said, it's June 12th. It's about 6 p.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time, and we're looking at uh, a little bit of a slump. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Bitcoin is down 4% uh, as uh, predicted by the experts. And we're looking at 35.6. Uh, Ethereum, uh, 2300 down, actually up 0.9%. It's pretty good. BNB uh, up a little bit. Cardano up 3.4%. Uh, so we'll take it. And then just a little bit of, uh, well, actually not too bad. 1.7.6 for Matic, 3% for uh, ICP, 4%. So, you know, in all honesty, uh, we're looking pretty good, except for wrapped Bitcoin, but that makes a lot of sense. So that's what's happening on the market. Uh, the market cap is 1.57 trillion, down from I think it's all-time high around 2.4 trillion. So uh, that is that is uh, not so great. But you know, when I take a look at these these numbers, and people talk about this flipping all the time. Hey, maybe this is the time when uh, uh, things do get flipped uh, as far as what's going on, because it seems like everything that's uh, happening. What has happened uh, negatively to Bitcoin, which is quite odd. And we'll get into that in a second. So let's just uh, break into the news. And the news right now, this is a, a website, bybt.com. And it can tell you all the different uh, Bitcoin futures market, perpetual and also futures and everything else. And this is what we got. There was uh, an increase in shorts uh, that came up, which means people believe that Bitcoin is going to uh, go down over the next uh, days, weeks, months whatever they are, uh, for whatever that time frame is. And uh, it breaks it all down by exchanges. So in Binance, uh, as far as percentage-wise goes, there's a little bit more on the short side. Shorts over 24 hours, longs 24 hours. Uh, Bybit, same thing. FTX, a little bit more on the other side. And then Binance, BitMEX, pretty much uh, the majority are a little bit more on the short side. So that's what it says to me, and what it says, I think, to a lot of people is that, hey, um, people don't have a lot of faith in Bitcoin. They all think it's going to go down. And it's a funny thing about the market. It seems like when everybody thinks it's going to go one way, it is the exact opposite. It's just uh, just one of those things. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, remember, we were supposed to have this huge, tremendous drop, and it didn't happen. So right now we're on Saturday, and we haven't really dropped too much in market cap per se, but Bitcoin has gone down. Will that affect the alts? Well, historically it does, but uh, you have to uh, you have to wonder like, what's the point? Because if everybody thinks is that everybody's talking Bitcoin, 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 maybe it's uh, Bitcoin's cross to bear. Speaking of crosses, let's take a look at this thing called a death cross. And these don't happen too often. Like I said, it's when the 50-day moving average crosses with well, the 200-day moving average. I'm not a big uh, TA guy. Uh, the guys over at Market Rebellion are helping me, but this is what it is. A death cross occurs in the 50-day moving average crosses below the 200-day moving average. If that happens, Bitcoin can enter bear market territory similar to what happened in 2018. And if I, let me blow this up. Speculative reports suggest that Bitcoin could soon drop to 20,000, referencing the looming bearish cross the 50 and 200-day moving average, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is what they're talking about here. So last time this bear cross happened, and you can see it right over here. In 2017, at the very end, when we reached our all-time high of around 20,000 for Bitcoin, good days, happy days. Everybody was, uh, was pretty ecstatic. Then in 2018, you just saw a big drop-off. 
And of course, that was because everything got too high and people said, you know what, we got to cool off and uh, it's not sustainable. And then off we go. So once the price starts to drop, then the moving average starts to drop. And then you have the 50 day on the blue and then the red says, hey, you know what? Uh, the averages are uh, going to catch up to you. And once that crosses over, it's just really what it is. It's a lagging indicator and it just says people aren't buying. There's a lot more sellers than buyers. That's really what it comes down to. But then when that, once that happened, you had a drop of 70% for a very prolonged time. And that was the crypto winter, uh, as you can see right here. Pretty long time. Then it also happened again around uh, 2019, somewhere around about uh, September, October, November, December, somewhere around there. Crossed again. And it was 47% for a little bit of time. Uh, not as long as long as 2018, but uh, it did happen in 2020. Well, 2019 and 2019 and 2020. And then off we go until here we are again, making uh, massive gains. And we're right about to cross it uh, yet again. So that is one of those things where we're like, well, that's not too great. So don't worry, I'll get to the good stuff. So that's what's happening. Uh, this is the number you have to look, watch out for. A resistance is seen around 40,000, which has capped short-term prices over the past week. And that's really it, $40,000. And here's what I'm gonna say about this. All these things that we just talked about. These lagging indicators, everything that, that has been said right here. I can just say that uh, it really is, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If everybody talks about it and says, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, guess what, it happens. And uh, these things that are going on, it's just a, like I said, it's a lagging indicator. And uh, what it means, quite simply, a lot of sellers out there who don't have a lot of faith in the market. Why don't they have a lot of faith? It astounds me myself because we've had nothing but a ton of good news. I do not care about China. I do not care about them uh, moving Bitcoin miners. Me personally, I think that's a positive. I do not care about how uh, they have been um, uh, silencing influencers and uh, you know, uh, shutting down these exchanges. That's China. It's only, and it's, this is going to sound ridiculous when I said it, say it, it's only 1.6 billion. Why do I say that? Because that's the amount of people in China. But guess what? We've got five and a half billion left over. So I just don't really see much of an issue. And I know that the government is talking about regulation. This is what we want too. We want clarity. I don't know what is the problem with people. They're like, we shouldn't have regulation. We shouldn't. It gives clarity to everybody. everybody. We know we're going. Businesses can get in. This makes a lot of sense. And then, of course, everything else that's, that's happening in the other countries, even the great state of Texas I live in, the Governor Greg Abbott, a uh, pretty conservative fellow, just comes out and says that he uh, signed a master plan that uh, puts in the law for blockchain. So I'm like, this is all good news. Where is this coming from? Manipulation, whales, people moving around, people scared. And that's just what it comes down to. So let's talk about some on the flip side. So this is from Investopedia, and it's just, you just, do a search term. What is death cross? And this is going to come up. Death cross is saying that short-term momentum in a stock or stock index is slowing, but it is not always a reliable indicator that a bull market is about to end. There have been many times when a death cross appeared, such as in the summer of 2016, when it proved to be a false indicator. Those who got out of stocks during the summer of 2016 missed the sizable stock market gains that followed through 2017. And of course, uh, here's their example right here. And they're going to give you a prime example of Facebook. So here's a great example of, again, the 200-day uh, uh, or the 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average, they cross over. Here's a death cross. And this is for Facebook in around 2018. Everybody's freaking out. They're like, wow, no, a death cross. And then the price exploded all the way up here. And then it kind of came down and then we kind of bounce around here. And then there was another death cross and this one proves to be accurate. So to me, TA has its place and I believe in TA, but it's like my friend CJ says, or Mark Rebellion, uh, TA works great until it doesn't. And uh, that's it. It is not a crystal ball. I can't tell you everything, but it is one of those things where you're like, hey, you know what, I really should be a little more careful about what's going on. So uh, that is essentially uh, the whole death cross, uh, what's going on. So uh, then to, to finish this up, um, examples of a death cross, to, 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 to Facebook. Yeah, that's about it. Actually, no, that is the last part of it. But I will say this, 
um, just to finish up here. And that is that it could be true. This death cross could be like uh, the end all be all and we could enter another crypto winter. That is essentially what it is. That is true. So uh, the thing is, is that you could get out. On this show, I cannot tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. This is financial opinion, not financial advice. I can only tell you exactly what I am going to do and, and what other people are going to do. So for me, I'm not going to sell anything because I just don't like to play the games of getting out and then uh, you know watching it maybe go down, maybe trade sideways for a long time, or heck, even maybe go up. I have no idea. But I always think back to the original people who invested. And remember when the people got into Bitcoin when it was 10, 15 bucks, and then it went all the way to a thousand. And uh, you know, they're like, this is great. And then it dropped down to 120 bucks. And they're like, I'm out of here. This is ridiculous. I lost 90% of my value. This thing's junk. I'm gone. And they just left. Now it took a little bit of time to get back uh, to where they were, but they did. And if all those people just would have said, you know what, I don't really care. You know, I don't, this isn't something that I, I have to have. I didn't sell my house and uh, my, all my cars and my kidneys and my children <laughs> to, to buy Bitcoin. So if it goes down a little bit, I'm not going to lose anything unless I sell into fiat. So I'm just going to let it ride. So for me, I will probably not sell. And uh, it has nothing to do with diamond hands and that religious type of thing that people will always say, you gotta have diamond hands, you gotta have diamond hands. Look, I don't really, it's what's best for you. Your goals are not my goals, okay? So if you feel like I gotta sell, I'm, I'm in profits, it's best for my family, then go ahead and sell. I will never call anybody paper hands again. I, I think that's a very dumb uh, way to, 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 to say it because it just gets in people's heads like they gotta hold on forever. You don't have to hold on forever. So what if Bitcoin goes to, a million and you sell and someone goes, you got paper hands who's going to 2 million in 10 years. You're like, who cares? I got a million bucks. So, uh, I mean, and then there's the argument about, you know, everything's going to crypto. Sure. All right. Anyhow, that's what I got. And the other thing that I will say is that, um, you know, some people will look at this and they'll say, well, maybe I'll just get out right now. And if it, if it goes all the way down, I'm protected. Sure. You can do that. Or if it's uh, actually just trade sideways and I'm out, it doesn't really matter if it's trading sideways. Or if it even goes up and starts to rally, then I'll just get back in and pay a 5% penalty. That's another option. But again, for me, it's not my, it's not my thing. Uh, I have an exit strategy uh, for most of my altcoins, some of my Bitcoin. I'll be updating that very soon, but this is just how I see things. And, uh, and that is it. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our, our last piece. So our last piece here uh, is just about uh, good old Ted Cruz. And uh, if you're not from America, you probably don't know, don't know this guy. He's a U.S. senator. He's a Republican. And uh, it's a funny thing because the ex-president of the United States, Trump, came out. Again, do not give me a thumbs down because you don't like Trump. This is nothing to do with Trump. It's not a political channel. I'm just referencing it because of crypto. So with Trump, he came out and said that he believes that Bitcoin is a scam and he doesn't trust it. But he did say he thinks it is a uh, competition uh, for the US dollar as it is a currency. I'm like, hey, great, you call it a currency. Thanks, man. And uh, that's it. So on there's that side and he's a Republican. And then Cruz comes out here and he's talking to uh, Sean Hannity and the Sean Hannity, whatever show he's on, he's on Fox or something. And uh, he, he First, they started to talk about, you know, Elizabeth Warren, who's already, who's a Democrat and already has talked negatively about cryptocurrency. Again, thumbs down. I don't care about Elizabeth Warren and her politics. I don't care any politics. I think it's all ridiculous. Uh, she came out and just bashed cryptocurrencies and, and said some pretty false things. She has no idea. She has no idea. She has some idea. She's not, she's not that dumb. But uh, she just said a lot of, a, a lot of fallacies. But uh, it's amazing how she will come out and say that. And then the other political side will say, you know what? I don't think she knows what she's talking about. And I think cryptocurrency is fantastic. Great. I don't care what your politics are. If you're talking positively about cryptocurrency, I want to talk to you. So this is what happened. After they started to bash everything on the Hannity show, uh, the conversation turned to crypto. And Sean Hannity says, okay, you've been hearing about it. Bitcoin cryptocurrency. What is it? Why is it so big? What's Bitcoin? What's blockchain? What's doggy coin? First of all, uh, any people who have no idea what uh, uh, crypto is, just go here, danteachescrypto.com. 100% free. I made it 100% free. It will all be 100, always be 100% free. And that's because I don't want anybody to pay for anything. I want them just to learn, understand, and then go out into the crypto world and understand what you're actually investing into. So that's why I made it free. I don't want anybody to pay for anything. Uh, so send those people that, that way. 
And uh, so Sean Hannity or uh, Ted Cruz says, I think part of the reason we're seeing people go to Bitcoin is because we're on the verge of an inflation crisis. True. Inflation crisis. True. And Joe Biden has proposed $7 trillion in new spending. I don't know the exact number, but it is trillions. So true. We're seeing inflation, which we're seeing lumber go up, uh, homes going up, oil going up, gasoline going up, energy going up, commodities going up. And I think people are going to Bitcoin as a hedge against that. And I think there is that part, you know, uh, as far as inflation, but there's also uh, a supply chain breakdown as well. So that will also contribute to these rising prices. That's not the whole point. The point is he's correct because we are going to see some inflation. There is no way you can print that much money. You can print 30% of the entire amount of fiat cash or US dollar in the last year or year and a half and not have inflation. I think that's incredibly uh, impossible. But I could be wrong because I am not an economist, but it doesn't make any sense to me to just keep adding money into it. So um, I think this is a positive part. And uh, hopefully, you know, the thing that President Trump, ex-President Trump said about uh, crypto, saying that it's, it's false and it's a scam, then the other part, other side of the party will say, also Republicans, hey, it's actually pretty good. You should look into it. Just be careful. And that's it. Great. I like to hear that. So these are the positive things. Uh, that I like to hear about. And uh, even Sean Handy at one point, he changed his, or he was going to change his Twitter profile with the laser eyes. Pretty funny. And that's it for, for those pieces. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Is that a good thing to actually offset uh, Senator Warren for whatever she said, goofiness? And then uh, Ted Cruz, who was also goofy, <laughs> said something positive. So that's it. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And lastly, I just want to make mention of um, Digital Asset News, the channel is only for news and the basics. So I create another channel for Dan, called Dan Clips. It's the advancements in cryptocurrency, and we talk about new projects. In this one, we went over uh, Card Starter for the Cardano uh, network. It's a launch pad, and it's very interesting how they're doing things. It's, it's an insured launch pad, so these, they, they vet out these new Cardano projects that are being built on Cardano, because as we know, smart contracts are coming in August, and it looks like they're on time, so I'm pretty happy. So it was uh, me... My man Hashoshi, and then we had uh, uh, Brandon and Owen from Cardstarter, and it was a long, uh, good uh, interview. So you can check it out. Check it out over at Dan Clips, and um, I just got to tell you, uh, just as a spoiler, um, all I'm going to do when I invest into more Cardano projects, I'm just going to let Cardstarter do the vetting process and let them launch it, and I'm going to invest into those. And that's just, that's really it. So watch the whole thing. On top of that, just so you know. My man Hash, woo, look at that. Hash has got uh, 1.5 million in his new um, uh, Cardano stake pool. So if you want to check that out, I will link that in the, the description below. Uh, D News also has uh, a stake pool as well. And we've got a nice handy dandy video down here, which explains exactly how to do it. And we're running the industry average, which is 4 to 6% uh, return on ADA. And very simple, uh, the, your Cardano never leaves your wallet. There's no slashing, nothing cra crazy like that. And we show you how to do it on Daedalus, Yoroi, and ADA Lite. And you can also substitute that for Hashoshi's uh, stake pool as well. So either one, if you want to do either one, that's fine or both. Hey, great. That's great. And uh, that is it for today. So um, good luck on the weekend. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Death cross might happen then or Monday. I don't know. It's somewhere around there. And uh, we'll see how things go. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Everything we talked about on this channel is time sensitive. So that's it. Appreciate it. Enjoy your weekend. See you on the next one.